and fills the bill like Philadelphia, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly is Philadelphia. This is Philadelphia. This is Philadelphia. Ah, this is Philadelphia. Actually, it's all Philadelphia. Melting pot, national shrine, a great big red, white, and blue metropolis that's been making headlines ever since July 4th, 1776. Now here with Independence Hall at its heart is America's most historical square mile. Here the towering figures of history lived and walked. This is where freedom was born on that historic July day when 56 men walked through this door gave the infant Yankee Doodle a resounding slap on the behind that sparked him to lusty life. Fifty-six men, fifty-six men, fifty-six men with a dream. Men who believed that a land of the free was not an impossible scheme. Fifty-six men, fifty-six men, seeking a place in the sun. Ready to fight and as ready to die for the prize that was there to be won. The prize of life, the prize of liberty, the right to pursue happiness. Old King George said no, 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 but the 56 men said yes. 56 names, 56 names, signed with strong, steady hand. The declaration of of a young defiant land. Hancock, Bartlett, Huntington, Lynch, Floyd, Sam Adams, John Adams, Gwyneth, Wilson, Payne, Sherman, Williams, Middleton, Hopkins, Hart, Lewis Morris, Robert Morris, Stockton, Walton, Park, Walcott, Lewis, Livingston, Parker, Rush, Richard Lee, Francis Lee, Jerry, Smith, McGean, Thornton, Whipple, Ellery, Penn, Ross, Thornton, Clymer, Rodney Taylor, Harold Chase, Stone, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Rutledge, Harrison, Reed, Wyatt, Hopkinson, Witherspoon, Hipper, Hughes, Braxton, Hayward, Nelson, Hall. Fifty-six names, fifty-six names, signed with strong, steady hand. Along with its better-known nicknames, Philadelphia has been called the city of firsts. Here was the nation's first capital. Young America turned on its first street light here. Carpenter's Hall, meeting place of the First Continental Congress. It looks today just as it did when the Founding Fathers convened here. The nation's first hospital. Philadelphia's foresight made it a top banking center. The first fire department was organized here. Today's equipment is a far cry from the fire wagons the young Franklin might have chased. The first police department fought the forces of crime here. Philadelphia's finest are more numerous today, but no less valiant than their forebearers in blue. Philadelphia is the site of the nation's first naval base. Christ Church, pew number 58, occupied by George and Martha Washington. 
Philadelphia is the home of the first daily newspaper and the first magazine. Here, too, is America's first art institution. And here, most importantly, were the first stirrings of a radical idea that happiness should, could, and would be pursued. And nowhere in modern Philadelphia is happiness pursued on a grander scale than in Rittenhouse Square, the traditional stomping ground of Philadelphia's self-perpetuating main line. Rittenhouse Square in the rarefied air of the smart set. Upper, upper, Hospitality Center welcomes and guides the tourists to places like Elfrith Sally, the oldest thoroughfare in the United States. The plaques on these homes and on buildings throughout the city certify their authenticity. Benedict Arnold bought but never occupied this mansion. Strawberry Mansion is another of Fairmount Park's attractions. Nobody leaves without a visit to the Betsy Ross house. The restoration is so complete the famous seamstress might have just hung out her equally famous flag. Christ Church Burial Ground, where Benjamin Franklin is interred with the other signers of the Declaration of Independence. Franklin Institute is one of the monuments to his memory. The popular Philadelphia Zoo, which is incidentally the nation's oldest, boasts one of the finest animal collections in the world. And this fellow is one of 1,800 different species. The Museum of Art ranks with some of the finest in the world. You might say that Philadelphia is just one big open air art museum. The visitor is never very far from the next statue. They've got statues of Penn, three stories high, statues of Ben. Like Abraham Lincoln, crazy statues, lazy statues, even statues thinking, statues whimsically shaped, draped and undraped, built to men of peace and men and small. 
Today, the all-American city is dreaming big dreams. Going from dreams to plans, from plans to blueprints. Blueprints to bulldozers. From bulldozers to the reality of an unprecedented building boom. And the third largest city in the United States is one of its biggest industrial centers. In super-efficient plants like these, 2% of America's population produces 10% of the national wealth and goods. Philadelphia's climate of progress is conducive to big business. And the needle trade, along the industrial backbone of the city's economy, is flourishing as never before. Betsy Ross really started something when she ran up that flag. The last word in time savers ups the output of firms like Botany 500 to well over one million garments a year. Here, men's formal wear manufacturers, after six, carry on the tradition of made in Philly, sold in Philly, worn all over the world. Food Fair, with its gigantic chain of stores, operates out of Philadelphia, servicing the East Coast. Philadelphia's National Airport links her with the whole wide world. Her modern railroad terminals daily handle thousands of passengers who flock to the nation's number one shrine. The network of high-speed expressways is constantly expanding. Lush hotels like the Bellevue Stratford provide the ultimate in away-from-home luxury. Market Street's department stores are a tourist temptation. Convention facilities serve over a half a million conventioneers a year. And conventioneers know a fun town when they see one. When the sun goes down, Philadelphia is a town to see. Long famous as a tryout town, Philadelphia keeps its five legitimate theaters book solid. And there are plenty of places to go after the show. The visitor can buy back his hat in some of the liveliest clubs you'll find anywhere. Yes, the Cradle of Liberty isn't the only thing that rocks in Philadelphia. This is a Fourth of July town where every day is the Fourth of July. This is a flag high and high town that's all American as apple pie. This is a do or a die town pursuing the pursuit of happiness. can feed the inner man with pretzels a la mustard for a dime. Theater in the park where sister discovers that she can get her Juliet al fresco. Concerts after dark where young music lovers are holding hands to handle an Inesco. Rouse and cheers from the crowd and tears of the Phillies make that play. 